John Calvin has declared that there are two distinguishing marks of the church, the preaching of the word and the proper administration of the sacraments. But Calvin also acknowledges that beyond those, beyond the core principles of our faith, there will be differences of opinion and of practice among different churches. And he is saying that is okay, because if we affirm the core of our faith, we are still unified in Christ as the broader church. John Calvin writes this, Some fault may creep into the administration of either doctrine or sacraments, but this ought not to estrange us from communion with the church. For not all the articles of true doctrine are of the same sort. Some are so necessary to know that they should be certain and unquestioned by all men as the proper principles of religion. Such are God is one, Christ is God and the Son of God, our salvation rests in God's mercy, and the like. Among the churches there are other articles of doctrine disputed which still do not break the unity of faith. So first of all, Calvin is saying that churches are made up of sin sinner saints, of broken individuals saved by God's mercy, doing their best to honor and teach about God. And therefore, no church is going to be perfect in doctrine or theology. That all of us will have blind spots, will misinterpret certain things. But he's also saying that there are these core teachings of faith that are vital. That if you break away from some of those core truths, you're breaking away from the Christian faith. He mentions God is one, Christ is God, salvation is in God's mercy. And I think today it's good for us to understand because we have lots of friends in other churches. And that's great. In the Twin Cities Metro, there's lots of different branches of the church. That's not to say that they are broken off branches, that they are not a part of Christ who is divine. They may worship differently, they may interpret scripture a little differently, but that's okay. I think it's important for us to recognize that, yes, we affirm the Apostles' Creed like a lot of other Christian churches, but beyond that, we have the Reformed interpretation of scripture as defined by the Heidelberg Catechism, the Canons of Dort and the Belgic Confession. And in those we really form our Reformed accent, which is God's sovereignty, God's kingdom, and God's covenant. That God is sovereign over our salvation, that he is sovereign over human history, that we are servants of God's kingdom, which is already here but not yet in its fullness, and that we are a part of God's covenant. That's one of the reasons why we baptize babies, because they are born into God's family. And within our tradition, we really affirm and celebrate the teaching and theology of John Calvin and of Abraham Kuyper, who came a little bit later, and of Tim Keller, because they really interpret scripture according to our reformed faith and help us understand who God is. But we can also learn from leaders and other branches of the church. We can learn from Thomas Aquinas from the Catholic tradition. We can learn from Martin Luther in the Lutheran tradition. We can learn from John and Charles Wesley of the Methodist tradition. We can learn from Gardner Taylor of the Baptist tradition. All of those people are followers of Jesus who may worship a little bit differently, but we can still learn from them and hopefully they can learn from us as we continue to follow Jesus and make disciples for Christ. So I think it's important to see that within our Reformed theology, we affirm the unity of the broader church but yet focus and appreciate some of our reformed distinctions.